Hey everybody, I hope you guys are all healthy and safe. This is my review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Now, let's say you don't have a lot of time to, let's say you want me to summarize the review in just two sentences. If I were to do that, I would just say this, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, it's basically a Galaxy S20 Ultra, except the focusing issues have been fixed and you get an S Pen stylus. Other than that, these two are very, very similar device with very, very similar performance. I mean, yeah, it's true. You have a Snapdragon 865 Plus in here. That's more powerful than the Snapdragon 865, but the performance are hardly noticeable in real life use. Now, that's not a bad thing because the 865 is already a very powerful SoC and the same can be said for the A65 Plus. Basically, whatever you want to run, you'll be able to run on this phone, including recording 8K video. Let's go over the hardware really quick. This is that new uh, Mystic Bronze, Mystic Copper color that Samsung is marketing, and I like it. This is a really nice looking design. I think it's a major upgrade over the S20 Ultra. First of all, because I like that the display is curved. Now, this is a minority opinion. A lot of people like that the S20 Ultra went with a flatter display. But to me, that phone lost the symmetry that we have known Samsung Galaxy phones for. This is back. The front and the back are symmetrical, meaning you can roll this phone in your hands like this and you can't really tell which side is the front, which side is the back, except for the fact that now the back, it's like matte glass. So we have a triple camera system here. Yeah, this is a huge camera bump, but again, I like this. It feels like Samsung made this bump big now on purpose and built the design around a large bump. Whereas on the S20 Ultra, I felt like that giant camera bump was just kind of tacked onto the phone's body. This feels like there's a purpose behind this bump. So up here, you have a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. Right here, it's a 108 megapixel sensor. That's the camera that gave the S20 Ultra those focusing issues because the sensor are so large that the depth of field um, focus area, it's a little bit narrower. And to fix that, Samsung has added a laser autofocus sensor right here. And that does the job. The focusing on this now is now lightning quick, just like on previous Samsung phones before the S20 Ultra. Finally, down here, you have a 12 megapixel periscope zoom lens. It allows you to get 5x lossless zoom and up to 50x digital zoom. So yes, Samsung has also backtracked from that 100x zoom from the S20 Ultra because Samsung realized it's gimmicky and at 100x, it's pretty damn blurry. To be honest, 50x on this phone is still a little bit blurry. As you can see, the zoom camera is definitely not as good as what's seen in the Huawei P40 Pro Plus, which has an extra fold in the periscope. But still, you're getting really clean 10x, even 20x images. And if you want to go up to 50x, it's still pretty useful in a pinch because you can read street signs across the street, you know, stuff like that. There are a lot of people who, who dismiss um, the need for such a zoom. You know, you see them on comment section or Twitter saying, oh, why would you even want to zoom more than 2x? I think you're a little bit narrow-minded. For someone like me, I like to zoom 10x all the time. For example, earlier today in Hong Kong, I spotted this butcher. You know, he looked pretty damn cool, like standing there posing in front of his meat and I wanted to get a picture of him. So what I did was I just turned on 5X zoom and then 10X zoom and I got these two shots that turned out pretty nice. And you know, I think it's a pretty stylish shot that I can post on Instagram. If I didn't have a periscope zoom camera on my phone, I would probably have to walk a little bit closer just to get a decent 2X zoom. And he would see that I'm taking a picture of him and he would probably get mad at me. Now around the front, it looks very similar to last year's Note 10. There's a, this is, a, now around the front, this looks very similar to the Note 10. It's a 6.9 inch quad HD OLED display. Absolutely a stunning screen to look at with very minimal bezels and a tiny hole punch up top that you really only notice when you open a white background. But new this year, it's a 120 Hertz refresh rate, but it also, it's an improvement over the S20 Ultra's 120 because now, you know, that phone, you either had to stick with 120 or 60. This phone now has an intelligent variable refresh rate. So that means if you, if you're using something that will take advantage of the 120, like when you're swiping around in the UI, then you get 120 hertz. But when you're doing something that does not require 120, like you're looking at a still picture or watching a 30 frames per second YouTube video, it'll intelligently drop down to 60 hertz or maybe even 30 hertz to match what the screen needs and that will save you battery because you're not always running at 120 hertz. And that has made a big jump in the battery life. The S20 Ultra's battery life did not impress me that much, even though it had a 5,000 milliamp hour cell. Now this phone has a smaller battery, 4,500 milliamp hour, but I've been getting all day battery 
13 hours out and about and I will finish the day with still like 20% battery life left. Now of course this is a flagship of flagship so you have all the stuff that you'd expect like wireless charging, water resistance and stereo speakers that are really damn loud and also SD card support up to one terabyte of storage. Out of the box you get either 256 or 512 gigs of storage with 12 gigs of RAM. Now of course it wouldn't be a note without the S Pen. The S Pen has been moved from the right side to the left side this year. And for the most part, it performs the same as before, except one major improvement and the other improvement is kind of gimmicky. The first improvement is that the latency between the, the S Pen tip and the screen has been drastically lowered. So now, now there's virtually no lag between what you're drawing with your hand and what is showing up on the screen. That's a major, major improvement and it makes drawing or taking notes just feels a lot more natural. The second new feature is now the even more shortcut gestures. I mean, uh, Samsung already introduced this with the Note 9 two years ago, meaning you can control the phone with the S Pen via Bluetooth. So one of my favorite use features is you hold on to the S Pen button to launch the camera. Once you're in the camera app, you can switch between the selfie lens or the main camera, cycle through different modes, and even take a picture by just pressing on the S Pen. That's very useful. Samsung added more this year, which is these really weird uh, gestures that allow you to like, draw a circle like that to like maybe um, go into app overview. You see, I just did that right now, but to be honest, it is very hard to get right. You first get the phone, you know, there's like a demo for you to test. I basically was stuck on it for like 10 minutes and I couldn't figure it out. And even to this day, I find it very hard to figure out all these gestures. And to be honest, why do you need all this nonsense? If you're doing this this close to the phone, you might as well just reach your finger over and just tap it on the screen. Okay, as I said, this phone is stereo speaker, so you know what we gotta do? We gotta test that stereo speaker sound. So sound coming out from down here and also in the front. It's a very nice speaker. You see, I cannot cover it at all. All right, now let's look at the cameras. Okay, I'm just gonna give you the short version right away. For the most part, the camera performance overall are virtually identical to the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra's cameras, except the focusing issue has been fixed. So that means that you can expect this camera to be very, very good most of the time, especially during the day, you can get some really stunning, nice looking photos with really dialed up contrast that just looks really photogenic and almost like there's a filter applied to it already that you can put on Instagram. And at night, it also pulls in a lot of light, but to the point that it overexposes city lights in Hong Kong quite regularly. So once again, in terms of nighttime photography, I still find that this falls short of the Huawei P40 Pro Plus, but I do think it is better than what the iPhone 11 Pro Max can do and also the Google Pixel 4. So I would say that the Note 20 Ultra, just like the S20 Ultra's camera system, you know, it's a nice second or third place for me, but it is not the first place. That still goes to the Huawei P40 Pro Plus. I'm also really liking the wide angle camera. It's wider than usual, but Samsung has fixed the barrel distortion. You're just getting a lot of details, even though wide angle cameras, you know, traditionally loses a lot of details and struggles with dynamic range, but that is not the case right here. Now what's new to the camera mode this year is this new Pro video mode. So as you can see, there's a lot more controls than you would find in your typical camera viewfinder. Now if you look at the lower left-hand corner, it's a bar for audio levels. That's because the Note 20 Ultra has multiple mics that can um, take multi-directional audio. So if you tap on this little button here, you'll see that right now by default it's set an Omni. So that means it's recording sound from all direction. But you pick front, now this will prioritize my voice because I am in front of the camera. So this is using the mic that's uh, forward facing and just picking sound from me and ideally not so much sound from in front of me. But then if you tap on this, then now you're picking up sound from in front of that person. And you also have option for USB mic and Bluetooth mic too, but I don't have those plugged in. Okay, testing the microphone. So now the sound's coming from the front. Now I'm gonna set it so the sound's coming from the back. So now it's picking up that sound. So the bus might have been pretty loud. Now it's the back. Now I'll switch back to the front. Switch back to the front. Switch back to the front. Switch back to this side now. So now we're picking up sound from out there. And right here, focus. Now this is cool. You, you can control focus right here. So you can do something artistic like this, like kind of, you know, begin recording with this little blur bokeh effect right here like this, and then kind of bring the scene into focus, like a little cinematic vibe. And you have focus peaking right here. The green bars shows you where is in focus. It's, it's stuff that you would know if you, 
if you shoot with a real video camera. So this is a really nice layout that gives you a lot of control over shooting videos. But video stabilization is really good. Now, there's actually two ways to shoot. You can shoot with the main camera, that's just standard video. You get the best video quality, but then video stabilization is totally just OIS and EIS. It is pretty good, but not like flawless. But then if you turn on super stable mode, then you will shoot with the ultra wide angle camera, which is wider, but then the software will crop in and you'll get a lot more stable videos. But when you shoot with this camera, because you know there's lower pixel count, so you lose a little bit of details and especially in low light situation, it's not gonna look as pleasing. Now, is this the best video camera phone around? I can't say for sure. I think the iPhone 11 Pro Max still has a little bit better stabilization. The Huawei P40 Pro Plus has a little bit better stabilization too. But you factor in the fact that you have, you can control your microphone audio inputs, like which direction you can shoot in 21 by nine, and you can shoot in 8K, and you can do manual focus, all of that, which the iPhone cannot do, then I think this might be in contention or a major contender for the best video camera around. Now, I haven't talked about the selfie camera much, but that's just because I'm not that much of a selfie person, but I don't think you'll have any complaints whatsoever. This camera, it's very fast to focus, and you can even tap on this icon to get a wider field of vision. But of course, there's only one selfie camera right here, so that means when you're shooting in this mode, it's just cropped in a little bit, but resolution looks really good. Now, I do think my face, you know, Korean phones, just like Chinese phones, they always apply these artificial beauty filters that make you look a little bit more fake than with an iPhone. But some people like that. I think for the most part, no complaints about this selfie camera. So that's about it for my review of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Now, can I say that this phone is a truly cutting edge, bleeding edge phone that blew me away? No, because the Huawei P40 Pro Plus still has arguably better hardware. And to be honest, this is not even Samsung's top phone. Samsung's top phone is the upcoming Galaxy Fold 2. That's the phone that Samsung will be walking around showing to everybody, puffing the chest up, be like, yeah, this is why we're Samsung. We made this that nobody else can do. That's the phone that Samsung's truly, truly apex device. This is more like a plain, safe refinement over the already excellent Galaxy S20 Ultra and the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Now, there are many very good reasons to own this phone though, because there are people that really like having a stylus. I'm not one of those. I find the stylus very fun to have. You know, I like drawing mustaches on people and I like controlling the phone sometimes with a stylus, but I don't need it. It's not a must have for me, but there are a lot of people to whom this is a must have. And if you're one of those people, what other options do you have? It's either the Note 10 Plus or the Note 20 Ultra. Now this phone's a little bit expensive. It's over $1,200, $1,300, depending on where you are. But that's the price of all flagship nowadays. If you know you're on the market for value, if you just don't want to spend that much money, then go get a OnePlus Nord, go get a Xiaomi Mi 10. If you already know you want a flagship, then these prices are kind of expected nowadays. I actually think, considering how much a phone does for us from a day-to-day -day basis and contains cutting edge tech, like this screen is better than the screen on most of our TVs. This phone has more processing power than most of our laptops. So I think considering all that, $1,200 is not unreasonable. So once again, that's my review of the Note 20 Ultra. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel or follow me on Instagram. I have a lot more stuff coming up, including on Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra and a couple of devices from Honor too. So stuff's coming nonstop, man. I'm gonna have a lot more videos coming up. So please subscribe to my channel, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy and stay safe.